lesson on tonight. Tonight, um, hey, Londa, how you doing? <laughs> Uh, before we get going, I do want to uh, go ahead and pray. Uh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We thank you for tonight. We ask you, O oh God, that you would bless us, bless our ears so that we may hear your word, and bless our hearts so that we may obey your word. We thank you for your word, because the grass shall wither, the flower shall fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have done for us. And God, we trust you and we love you and we expect you to do great things for us because of who you are. We trust you. Even in the midst of whatever we're going through, we trust you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Um, I hope you had a productive um, week. I hope you had a good week. Um, Irregardless of what happened to you this week, it's, it's a saying that I live by. Um, it's a saying that, a quote that I have taught my sons. They know I have lived, I lived by it when I was younger, and I try to teach them to live by it. Um, there's a famous saying that says, it's by um, Chuck Swindle. It said, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. Uh, meaning, no matter what comes our way, it is how we handle it. That offsets what we can do. Um, so whatever comes our way, I want you to know you can do it. I want you to know you can handle it because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And another thing that Jesus said is he said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. That is a promise. That is a promise that gives you strength is that he said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. Not meaning that you wouldn't go through anything, meaning not meaning that you wouldn't have any troubles or any trials, but he promised I would never leave you or forsake you. Um, and I thank God for his word. I thank God because the word is the word and it's true. The Bible says the grass shall wither. The book of Isaiah, Isaiah says the grass shall wither, the flower shall fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. Um, people come, people go. Um, we grow old. We once were young. Some of us are getting older. Uh, but one thing that is still true, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor its seed begging for bread. So I thank God for the word of God. And I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not my might, not your might, not our government's might, but his might. Uh, because he's so awesome and so powerful that the Bible says heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Isaiah tells us that he measures the universe with his hand, the span of his hand. That's a pretty awesome God that we serve. So I want you to take comfort in that. And as we come to you in this broadcast, as I always do, as I try to always do, um, I am praying for you. I am praying for those who have lost loved ones. I'm praying for people who are suffering, who are hurting in their heart uh, from the loss of a loved one. Uh, this year has been uh, quite a year. So um, I want you to know that I'm praying for you. My family, we're praying for you. We pray every night. Um, I'm not just saying that we do it. We get together and we pray. Uh, we pray a family for the old saying says a family that prays together, stays together. And so we pray every night. We're calling out your name. And matter of fact, even as this broadcast goes on, if you could do me a favor and put the names of people that you would want us to pray for. Uh, maybe you have a loved one that we need to call out. Um, maybe you have a loved one that needs to come to Christ. Maybe you have a loved one out there who is sick. Um, please put their name um, down there and I will remember their name. I'm going to write them down and we'll call them out. We'll verbalize them out there and call them out. So put their name down there. Um, I ask you to like and share um, because I hope what I'm saying and I, is helpful to you. I hope what I'm saying is the word of God. I try not to come in my own power, my own flesh, my own opinion. Uh, I only come in the word of God. Because like I said before, um, the grass shall wither, the flower shall fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. I'm not smart enough to oversight the word. Um, I'm just going to give you what the word says. And I believe if I can give you what the word says and you stand on what the word stand, says, that is what gives you strength. I want to give you a real practical point <clears throat> tonight. And uh, Miss, Miss Sharon, as you put those names in there, I promise you I'm going to call those names out. Um, I want to give you a real practical point tonight. Um, and I'm going to give you a practical point from the word of God. In the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, 
uh, beginning at the seventh verse. Uh, we have all prayed it. Uh, we've all said it. We've, we've seen poems, but I want to just hit one little nugget in this. It's called the Lord's Prayer. Uh, that's why uh, my heading for tonight was give us this day. Uh, verse number uh, chapter six, Matthew chapter six, beginning at verse five. He says, Jesus says unto his disciples, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily or truly, I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of, even before you ask it. After and be, be ye, now I'm going to read it again. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Number nine, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Here's the verse I want to really lean on tonight. Give us this day our daily bread. I'm going to continue to read. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to go back to verse number 11 when he says, Give us this day our daily bread. I just want to focus on that. I'm, I'm realizing that the time and the day that we live in, there are a lot of stressors in our life. Um, there's a lot of things. Um, it, I could sit up here all day and tell you what the things that I got going on in my life. And you can tell me about the things that you've got going on in your life. The one thing about 2020, 2020 has touched almost every human being on earth. It has touched. It has impacted. This year has touched every life. But I was noticing as I was reading that, and I only try to give you what I do in my personal time. Because if I'm reading it in my personal time and something just, just clicks in me, I read it and, and I say, wow, that's good to share. And like I said before, uh, one of the acronyms for the Bible when I was growing up, they used to say it, uh, is to be B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what they used to tell me in Sunday school when I was growing up. They said, if you want to remember what the Bible is, it's a, the B-I-B-L-E is basic instructions before leaving earth. So as I was reading verse number 11 uh, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, and he said, give us this day. And something went off in my head. And I said, you know what our problem is? We overwhelm ourselves and stress ourselves out because we often, here's the thing, we're worried about something in the future that may not happen. And then sometimes we stress ourselves about the past, what there's nothing we can do about it. Jesus, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. When the disciples came to him and said, Father, teach us how to pray. He said in verse number 11, give us this day. I, today is Saturday. I can't be stressed about tomorrow. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? There's nothing I can do about yesterday. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow may never come. But God, you have given me 24 hours today. So today... I'm going to make today count. I'm not going to stress myself out. Ladies, can I give you something practical? Ladies and gentlemen, stop stressing yourself out when you don't control the world. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Reason why Jesus said, bring me every burden and bring me every care. 
before I care it because he can handle the burdens. I don't care how strong, how educated, how wonderful you are. You cannot handle all of your burdens without the help of God. You cannot do it because God didn't make us to handle all of it. If he wanted us to handle it, he wouldn't have said, bring me every burden and every care. If you're strong enough to handle it, if you're intelligent enough to figure it out, I don't need God. I don't need God if I can figure everything out. I don't need God if I can do everything on my own. I need God because there are some things he can do that I can't do. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That gives me a peace in my mind. That gives me a peace in my soul. That the Bible said, look, look what he said when Jesus was praying. Jesus was praying this. This wasn't none of the apostles. This wasn't none of the forefathers in the old. This was Jesus the Christ. He said, give us this day. He said, when ye pray... Pray in this manner. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, in other teachings, um, uh, in previous uh, teachings from Jesus, Jesus tells the disciples, stop worrying about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. If I feed the lilies of the valley, if I feed the birds, how not much more will I take care of you? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to relax and re rest and relax in God. Because if God is going to take care of the bird, he's going to take care of me. If God is going to feed the animals of the world, he's going to take care of me. Be not dismayed, whatever the tide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings will love abide. Where love abides, God will take care of you. When Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, he said this. He said, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven. First of all, when he Jesus was praying, he was lifting him up. Our Father which art in heaven. I'm a father. I'm not as good of a father as God is, but I, I'm a, I think I'm a pretty good father. So first of all, he puts God on that level. Father, and I know from being the father, one of my jobs and one of the things that I try to do is make sure my kids are okay. Sometimes I and my wife and I will sacrifice our likes and our wants to make sure they're taken care of. And then the, here's a sign of a good father. I know what they need even before they know what they need. <laughs> That's, isn't, that, isn't that what he said? Isn't that what he said? He says, your father knows what you need even before you ask it. I know from being a good parent, from my wife and I are observant of our children. I know my kids need some new shoes. They won't have to come to me and say, daddy, we need some new shoes. Me and my wife are already putting stuff together because we know what you need. I know you need to eat. When they get up in the morning, I promise you this. When my kids get up in the morning, most of the time, especially during this virtual learning, most of the time their breakfast, their breakfast is already made because I know they need to eat. I know they need a bed to lay in. I know that they need like like certain things that they need around the house, the, 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 the clothing, uh, the food, um, even little even. And here's the thing. I'm such a good father and I ain't bragging on me. It's all glory to God. I know my kids. That's my job. They're mine. God gave them to me. My wife and I, we try to take care of them the best we can. We even give them the things they don't ask for. <laughs> glory to God. We even give them things they don't ask for. Like when I was out the other day, I'm just practical. I was out the other day. I was shopping. Uh, my wife and I was buying some stuff for the house, whatever. And I went by the, we were in Target, and I went by the electronic section, le session, uh, section, sorry, excuse me. I went by the electronic section, <laughs> and I said, I know they need uh, some money for their video games. They didn't ask. I just thought they'd give it to them because I'm their father. I know what they like. I know what my 16-year-old likes. I know what my 12-year-old likes. I know what my 9-year-old likes. I spend time with them. They need a bed to lay in. I know that they need like like certain things that they need around the house, the, 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 the clothing, uh, the food, um, even little even. And here's the thing. 
I'm such a good father, and I ain't bragging on me. It's all glory to God. I know my kids. That's my job. They're mine. God gave them to me. My wife and I, we try to take care of them the best we can. We even give them the things they don't ask for. <laughs> glory to God. We even give them things they don't ask for. Like when I was out the other day, I'm just practical. I was out the other day. I was shopping. Uh, my wife and I was buying some stuff for the house, whatever. And I went by the, we were in Target. And I went by the electronic section. Let, session, uh, section, sorry, excuse me. I went by the electronic section. <laughs> and I said, I know they need uh, some money for their video games. They didn't ask. I just thought they'd give it to them. Because I'm their father. I know what they like. I know what my 16-year-old likes. I know what my 12-year-old likes. I know what my 9-year-old likes. I spend time with them. So my wife and I know what they need of. Isn't that what Jesus just said? I know what you have need of even before you ask it. He's a good father. And he's always trying to take care of us. But one thing you cannot do is try to take his burdens when he said, give them to him. It is not my kid's responsibility to make sure the lights stay on in the house. It is not my kid's responsibility to make sure they got running water. It is not my kid's responsibility to make sure they got clothes to wear. It is not my kid's responsibility to make sure a roof is over their head. It is not my kid's responsibility to make sure that they eat. It is my responsibility because I'm the parent, I'm the adult. And if I, as a human being, have that much sense, how much more the God of my salvation? How much more the God? And just like my children come to me in the natural, you can go to your father right now at this time and say, Father, I have need of. And the Bible said, this is the Bible. I always just try to give you the Bible. He said in his word, he said, if men being evil know how to give their children good things, how much more your father, which is in heaven. I came to tell you, your father doesn't just want to give you materialistic stuff. He wants to give you the peace of God. He doesn't want to just give you a house. He want to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. God wants to give it to you, but you've got to cast your cares upon him before he careth for you. That's why Jesus said, give us this day. Stop stressing about tomorrow. I'm going to take care of tomorrow. Glory to God. As God, as my father, he's going to take care of my tomorrow. And what he does, since he knows my tomorrow, he gives me the strength to deal with my tomorrow. My tomorrow may be a tough tomorrow. My tomorrow may make me cry. My tomorrow may make me want to run and hide somewhere. But he says, I'll give you strength. And I came to tell you, God will give you strength for your tomorrow. He will give you joy for your tomorrow. He he will give you the glad tidings for tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's down the road. He knows what calamity I'm going to face. He knows, he knows, he knows. But since he already knows, that's why I'm going to cast my cares upon him. Because God, since you know, since you know, since you know, God, I can trust you. And I came to tell you tonight, he knows about your tomorrow. Don't you stress about anything. I guarantee you, you lay down your head tonight and give him everything. God will take care of it, but you got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. You've got to give it to him. You've got to make a choice to give it to him. You've got to make a choice to give him the rest of 2020. You've got to make a choice to give him your 2021, your 2022, however long he allows you to live on this earth. God, I give it to you. I give it to you because I trust you. I, and I just want to ask you a question. Has God not already made a way for you in the past? If God took care of you in the past, isn't this the same God who can take care of you now? Is, is, has God shrunken since 2020 has come around? Since God, Did God go run in the corner? Is God running from the pandemic? God ain't walking around with no mask. God don't have to do no social distancing. God don't have to uh, do this stuff that we telling each other. God's not a fearful. He said in his word, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you because you can't even take care of me. I came to tell you I serve a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask or even think so that's why he said cast your cares upon me that's why he says when ye pray when you pray 
Stay this. Give us this day. When you pray, say, Lord, when you get up in the morning, tomorrow is Sunday. If the Lord be willing, I'll make it to tomorrow. And when I get up in the morning, Lord, have your way this day. Lord, give us this day. God, I give you this day. So saints of God, one way we can be uh, less stressful. And I'm not saying life, life can have some stressors. Trust me. Trust me. I know. Between trying to be a, a father, a good father to three different human beings, trying to be a good husband, uh, trying to be a virtual teacher, dealing with different things that they throwing at you, trying to do uh, just dealing with everyday life. I know life can be stressful watching the news. Sometimes you got to turn the news off. Sometimes you got to turn your phone off. Because life will overwhelm you. But let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. You can make a choice of what you're going to allow to stress you out. You can make a choice from what you allow to become into your environment. You can tell yourself, I'm not going to welcome that. I'm not going to welcome that. That's unwelcome in my life today. Sometimes you can turn the phone off. Sometimes you can turn and just like some of us do and we have, you can ignore the call. <laughs> life will make a phone call to you. That will try to stress you out. Ignore the phone call and say, I'm going to give this to God. I'm going to give this to God. I'm going to give it to him because he knows what he's doing. When Jesus said, pray in this manner. It doesn't necessarily mean you pray the Lord's prayer every day. If you do, God bless you. I don't pray the Lord's prayer every day. But when I pray, I take the principles from the Lord's prayer. And I say, Father, have your way. This day, protect me this day. I give you this day. Lord, have your way this day. And whatever happens, whatever my God allows to come my way, I'm going to trust that you know what you're doing. Nothing has caught God by it. I keep telling you, and I have said it before, coronavirus did not catch God by surprise. God is not sitting up in heaven trying to figure out how he's going to work this out. <laughs> God is not sitting up with the council. He's not sitting around heaven with the angels. Oh, I wonder what we're going to do. I wonder, I wonder how we're going to figure this out. He's not. He's not. That's why I can trust in him because he knows what he's doing. Listen to this one more time. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Whatever you, and let me tell you, and this is what I take away from that. Just like God's in charge in heaven, God, you be in charge here on earth. Thy kingdom come, your kingdom, just like you rule in heaven, rule here in my life. Make, take it practical. Make it personal. Just like you rule in heaven, rule Russell. Rule my mind. Rule my mouth. How I word, word my mouth. How I speak. Rule my heart. What I let come in. Rule me. Rule me, God. I give you permission to let your kingdom come and your will be done in me as you have it in heaven. And God, I trust you. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of us are going through things or are dealing with stuff we don't have to deal with. We don't have to deal with it. Some of you have had sleepless nights. Some of you are stressed out, worried about this election. Worrying about this government, worrying about the coronavirus, worrying about what they're saying. I please be smart, wear a mask, be practical, but don't stress, ladies and gentlemen. Don't lose no sleep, because the God of the universe who took care of it, He will continue to take care of everything else. Be not dismayed. So I pray for you. I pray that God blesses you. I pray that. You exchange the garment of heaviness for the garment of praise. I love you. And I want you to be encouraged. The best is yet to come because God's in control. The best is yet to come because God's in control. Father God, we pray tonight for those who are watching. Praying right now where how, however many people will watch this live. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would minister and strengthen your people I pray in the Lord God for those who do not know you as Lord and Savior, that they would come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. God, if there are people on here.
who people on here who have loved ones who are not saved. I pray right now tonight that you would convict their hearts and convict their minds and cause them to understand that what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Save tonight, heal tonight, deliver in Jesus name. So in the words of the late G.E. Patterson, I command you to be healed, to be delivered and be set free. Give God your burdens. Say it. Give us this day. I give you God today. I give it. I'm just going to just push it all over and I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to let you handle it. I'm going to let you handle it. If you're if you're not saved, I pray that you will come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The Bible said this. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Listen, the, the, the room ain't going to start shaking. <laughs> ain't nothing going to come out the ground. If you are genuinely asking God to forgive you of your sins and you repent of your sins and you believe that Jesus Christ, God has raised him from the dead. You shall be safe. And when you do that, when you accept him, you also, you make an exchange. You accept Jesus and you give him your burdens. (laughs) He says here, that's why he says, come unto me. (laughs) Oh my God, I'm about to go. But he says, come unto me. There's no one else that can say that. There's no one else in your life. I love my wife. My wife cannot say, come unto me, all you that are laden in the heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Your mama can't say it. Your best friend can't say it. Your boo can't say it. Nobody else can say it and do it but Jesus. Nobody else. (laughs) He's the only one that can say, bring me every, 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 every burden. Some people, let me tell you, some people you talk to, I'm going to go because I already prayed, but some people you talk to don't even want to be bothered with everything. He is the only one who wants to be bothered with your every piece of drama. He's the only one that can take it, handle it, and fix it. That's why you give it to him. That's why you give it to him. And, And as we prepare to go into Thanksgiving week, You have something to be thankful for. The devil is a liar to tell you you don't have nothing to be thankful for. You have something to be thankful for. Because he's God. That's If I don't got nothing else to be thankful for, he's in control. It may not look like it, may not feel like it, but that's what I have to be thankful for. That I can, he can handle my every bit of drama. He can handle all of my burdens. I love you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. I thank you for listening. Share it, like it, share it with somebody as we try to just give people as much hope as possible. May God bless you. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. May his love be yours. He loves you in Jesus' name, and so do I. Good night.